One, two, three, four. There are places I'll remember all my life. Though some have changed, some forever, not for better. Some have gone and some remain. All these places have their moments where lovers and friends I still can recall. Love them all. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons. Today I'm breaking down another Beatles guitar classic perfect for solo acoustic performance. This one's called In My Life. And because I want to keep this lesson beginner friendly, I'm going to break down the standard way of playing it before jumping into a beginner friendly version. Let's get started. Okay, we have a close look in the neck. We're getting started with our intro section. I'm going to demonstrate it one time, nice and slow for you. Sounds like this. Okay, so all we have there, A major chord is being barred. I have my first finger stretched over the D, G, and B string. And I'm gonna do a nice little sweep strum where I take my pick, drag it down the strings, but then I'm gonna pluck the B string with my middle finger. This is just kind of my personal way of doing it. So it sounds very lush. Then my pinky is gonna stretch over to the fifth fret of the high E string. I'm gonna pluck that with my ring finger. That's our first little movement there. Strum of the A major chord, uh, pluck in the B string, and then the high E string, fifth fret, being plucked by my ring finger. One more time. Okay, so that's followed by a nice little hammer on here. I'm gonna um, play the B string, second fret, and hammer up to the B string, third fret. But I'm gonna have my open A string ringing out as I do. Then I'm gonna use my ring finger to pop the high E string. So that little segment right there sounds like this. Put the two parts together. And then finally, I'm going to the last segment. Sounds like this. So that is just my fourth fret high E string with my open low E string. Continue on picking. One and two and three and four and. Back to the beginning, strum of the A, fifth fret, plucked with my ring finger, hammer second fret to third fret to the high E string. Open E string and fourth fret E, high E string together. We play through that two times. One more time. Before jumping into our A section. Okay, so if you have your intro down, you're ready to move on to our A section, our verse. The chords we're gonna be needing, A major. That is zero, second fret D string, second fret G, second fret B, use my middle finger on top, open high E string. The E major chord, open E, second fret A, second fret D, first fret G, open B, open E. A bar chord, F sharp minor, bar and everything on the second, with my third and fourth finger on the fourth fret of the A and D string. 
You could also play it with the first finger just covering up the uh, G string, B string, and high E string, not a full bar, strumming from the A string down. Make sure you're keeping your thumb low while you're playing these bar chords. Then we're going to an A7 chord. This is one alternative. Open A string, D string second fret, open G, the second fret B string, and high E string, open. Or you could play a little bar like we did in the intro, but then with your middle finger here on the third fret of the low E string. My A string should be silenced when I'm doing this A slash G. Finally, we're going to the D major chord. I got my little peace sign right here on the second fret of the G and also second fret of the high E string. My third finger in between on the B string, third fret. Nice easy transition to D minor. That is my middle finger now on the second fret of the G string, my first finger here on the first fret. So the ring finger stayed put. And then back to A major for the resolve. Okay, you have your basic chord shapes down, you're ready to move on to the actual structure of the chord progression, and how many beats go with each of these chords. So, getting started with our A major chord, every chord in this progression is basically getting two beats, with the exception of the F sharp minor to A with the G in the bass change. So, we have the A major chord, one and two and a. To the E major chord, same thing, two beats, one and two and a. Now the F sharp minor is gonna get a slightly different feel. One and two and. Now that end right there, and that's where the A with the G over the bass comes in. You could have also played A7. A few different ways you can do that. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and three and four and a. Then we go to the D major chord. One and two and a D minor. One and back to the A major chord again to resolve, but double it this time. One and two and a three and four and a. So I'm using the basic rhythm and the groove to map out my strumming pattern. One and two and a. So down and down, down up. Down, down, down up. Then on the F sharp minor, a few different ways of doing this one, but I'm just going with some down strokes. Down, down, slap and then a downstroke on my A slash G. Then to uh, a couple of like uh, down, down, up just to fill in the space before going to the D major chord. Then same thing on the D minor. And back to the A major chord double. Down, 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 up. Lots of room to fit in some more strums if you want. Uh, this is definitely open for interpretation. Okay, so you have your A section complete. You're ready to move on to the B section. It has all the same chords. F sharp minor for four beats. A B minor for four beats. Moments to the G major chord with lovers and friends. Ah, this one's new. So we have the third finger on the third fret of the low E string, middle finger on the second fret A, and my pinky here on the high E string, uh, third fret. You could also play that with the middle finger on top and actually fret two strings, B string and high E string for a fuller version of the same chord. All right, so that was F sharp minor. One, two, three, four, B minor. With lovers and friends to the A major chord, I still can recall. Everything's getting four beats. The F sharp minor comes back. Some are dead and some are living. B minor chord, then we're gonna cut these in half. D major chord, one and two, and D minor, one and two, and back to the A major chord, one and two, and three, and four. Now for this section, this is a, um, something I'm preparing for a solo acoustic performance, so I wanna give it a little bit of rhythm, maybe a little bit of percussion uh, to go along with it. So, the F sharp minor, I'm gonna play down, chuck, up, down, up, chuck, up, for my strumming pattern. Same thing on the B minor chord, one and two, and three, and chucking on two and four. Great way to add in a little bit of a percussive feel to your playing. Then we're going to the G major chord, same thing. One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four. Same thing on the A major chord as well. Back to the F sharp minor. Some are dead and some are living. And we're so done with my, just one strum over D major. Life, I love them all. Before jumping back in 
to our intro. Okay, moving on to segment two of this video, we're going over a beginner friendly version of the A section and B section. So instead of playing that A major, E major, F sharp minor segment in the beginning, I'm going to exchange that for three easy chord shapes. A major. There are places I remember. A major seven, my first finger here on the first fret of the G string, my middle finger on the second fret D, third finger on the second fret B string. And then to the A dominant seven, just take that first finger off. Remember. So the three chords. There are places I remember. Then everything will be the same from here on out. D major chord. All my life. To the D minor chord. So A major. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. To the D chord. One and two. Three, D minor, and back to A major. That is your new simplified A section. Moving on to the B section, we're gonna have F sharp minor. Just play your A chord, and instead of barring it like this, we're just gonna put our first finger on the second fret E string and block our A string. Just like that. You can still use a pick and get the same exact sound that we were getting from our, uh, our bar chord there. So this section will sound like this. All these places have their... Then instead of the B minor chord, we're going to play D major. Moments to the G chord with lovers and friends. This part is verbatim. I still can recall four beats each. Back to the F sharp minor, just put that first finger back on top. Some are dead and some are... Now this part, we're going to play the D major chord. Living and then continue on D. In my life. D minor, and then back to A major chord. One, two, and three, and four. Let's see if we can play that full B section together. Got my first finger back up on top. All these places have their D chord moments. Here comes that G. With lovers and friends. Any G you know, I still can recall it's A. Put that first finger back on top. Some are dead and some are D major. Living in my life, I have loved them all. And that is a very beginner friendly way of playing through In My Life by the Beatles. Okay, so if you have your intro down, your A section and your B section, you've got the whole tune down, you're ready to perform. All right, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on the Beatles In My Life. For the beginner guitar players out there in the Philadelphia area, I do have another beginner guitar class coming up January 4th, 2015. You can visit phillyguitarclass.com for all the details. I got plenty more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe. I'm Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.